Grok has recently added vision. That means Grok can understand images. So I wanted to do a quick test. So instead of just using it with Grok, I wanted to give you a baseline benchmark with chat GPT. So I'm going to use the GPT 4.0 o model in this particular case. And we're going to do the test with Grok 2, not Grok 2 mini. So we're going to use it a bunch of images and then see how Grok and chat GPT with the GPT 4.0 o model as the backend would perform. The very easy thing that we can always do is to, you, you know, ask it to compare some meme. So I'm going to just literally use some meme and then ask it to compare that meme. So I'm going to copy this image, paste it here and paste it here. And I'm going to simply say, explain this meme, explain this meme. And uh, it says, okay, this is a popular meme format called the distracted boyfriend meme, often used to depict someone being tempted by distraction. In this version, me is a character who should be focusing on. Okay, so the meme humorously illustrates the struggle of staying focused on work while being drawn to humorous distractions like meme. I guess it kind of understood it. It gives me almost the same answer. Uh, I mean, it's it's very um, very odd to see that the answers are uh, very similar in this particular case. The woman in blue is looking disapproving that the man is labeled as the work that I should be doing. So it says the meme humorously illustrates the common scenario in fact, like the words are very similar. I'm not sure it's quite uh, shocking. Where someone is distracted by something entertaining in this case, memes on teams instead of focusing on work. Uh, I guess both both these systems have got a good point in this particular case. So I'm going to move, move on to the next one, which is something that we did with Molmo and Molmo was the only model that got this. So I'm going to send this clock and then ask it to tell me the time. Tell me the time and tell me the time so send it and send it and uh, you can see that uh, the time on the clock shown in this image is 10 10 as that is possibly the clocks that you would mostly see analog clock so this means that grok has not understood the image at all so in this case once again chat gpt also tells me it is 10 10 so both these uh, ai vision components do a terrible job of understanding time so now I'm going to get a digital clock instead of an analog clock. And then I'm going to ask it to tell me the time. So this is a digital clock. I'm copying this time. Tell me this time. Tell me this time. This time digital clock should be straightforward. Tell me the time and tell me the time. So in both the cases, I'm sending it with tell me the time. And in this case, it correctly identifies that it is 923. And in this case, it correctly identifies it is 923. The next one, I want to use this uh, vision models, which are not really good with the task that we are going to use it for, but I still want to understand. I'm going to send an image, which is AI generated in this particular case. It's a flux used um, in this case to generate the image. Act as an AI image classifier and uh, score it on various parameters. So I'm asking you to behave like an AI uh, image classifier and then uh, score it, score the image. So let's send it and then see what is going to happen in this case. So here is an analysis of the image based on various parameters, subject, background, pose. So on uh, focus and clarity, it gives me one, nine, composition, eight, lightning, blah, 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 blah. So you have a lot of different parameters. It gives me the reasoning, symbolism, artistic value, overall score. So this image is okay. In both these cases, it did not understand what my objective was. My objective was it to tell me whether this is AI generated or not. Okay, I'm going to send this again. Uh, AI generated or not. Give me a score. And same thing I want to do in this case. AI generated or not. Give me the score. It's almost like both of them are getting the training data from the same um, company. So once again, it is evaluating on all these things. And it says 75% AI generated, uh, which is good. So it says given the current capabilities, this could be high quality AI generated image, but it also fits in uh, professional photography. So it, it did not give me the right um, direct answer, but I think it helps me an, uh, understand what are the parameters in which it is evaluating. So, okay, cool. So I'm okay with the, both the images, but I would still say chat GPT definitely won here because it gave me a direct answer of 75% AI generated. So the next thing that I wanted to do is I want to give an equation, a very simple mathematical equation and uh, give me uh, the, the latex part. So I'm going to paste the equation. Give me the latex part. 
So it's giving me a latex. I'm going to go use a latex renderer, latex renderer. And I'm going to paste the equation that we got just there and then try to compare it. So I've pasted it. And what do we have? We have a is equal to pi r square by two is equal to one by two pi r square. Okay, that's great. So we have got exact, exact whatever we pasted. From Grok, I've got this and I'm going to paste this and render it and it is saying a is equal to pi r square by two. So it is partially right, uh, but it uh, missed the second part that we have in this particular case. So once again, chat GPT does a pretty good job than what Grok has done. The next thing that I want to do here is I want to just simply go give a handwriting test. So instead of using anything, I'm going to use my own handwriting to go to Excalibur. And this is something that I wrote, but I'm going to write it again just to make sure my name is, let's say one little, I did Abdul before, but now I'm going to do one little coder. Okay. So I'm going to take a beautiful screenshot of this and paste it here and uh, read it for me. Read it for me. So this is like optical character recognition, but more with a not so beautiful handwriting. So my name is okay. It says my name is one little coder. That's pretty good. Uh, it says my name is a little deer. Why does it look like my name is a little deer? Seriously. Uh, yeah, that is quite bad grok. This is super bad. <laughs> GPT-4 vision has done a pretty good job, but uh, I could not expect that this said that my name is little deer. Okay, that's quite ugly. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply get a paper from archive and I'm going to just send the screenshot of the paper. So I'm going to go to the PDF and send the screenshot, copy this here. And I'm going to just simply say, uh, simply send, explain like I'm um, five, five, explain like I'm five. I think I've explained this multiple times. Like one of the reason we want vision language model, not just an optical character recognition model is because we wanted to use the language ability also. So I said, explain like I'm five, uh, Grok is uh, one thing I've noticed with Grok is it talks a lot. I mean, it's, it's quite elaborate. So this paper uh, is about a new type of memory uh, for computers called XLSTM, which helps them remember important information when they are uh, trying to understand things like language. Imagine your brain is a box and then it goes on explaining the details. Um, pause the video and then read it. It gives me the title, authors, abstract, memory cells. So I wouldn't say necessarily it's like explain like I'm five. It gives me very elaborative answer, which is not what I expected. Okay. Uh, I wanted something simpler, but once again, I would say that uh, it did the job of optical character recognition, like understanding what is in the image very well, but it did not do a good job of uh, following my instruction, whatever I wanted. So the next thing that I want to do is chart understanding. I'm going to go live to uh, our world in data and I want to take this chart and instead of giving the title, which would, you know, uh, ideally indicate what is the title. So I'm going to take this screenshot here and uh, I'm going to paste it. Tell me what's interesting. Send it um, and tell me what's interesting. So this chart shows population growth rate in high income countries from 1950 to 2023. Here are some interesting points. Okay, I, I'm interestingly looking for only the summary. The chart underscores the shifting dynamics of population growth in high dynamic countries where migration is a crucial factor in preventing population decline due to lower birth rates and aging population. The graph tells us that migration has been important for keeping the population growing in high income countries, especially when the natural growth rates are low or negative. So this is what it is. So I'm going to ask it to give me a title. So if you were to suggest a title, give me a title title for the chart. Okay. And give me a title for the chart. So this is where we test the language capability. Population growth in high income countries, the rising role of migration in sustaining the growth, the impact of migration on population growth in high income countries, 1950 to 2023. I would say that Grok is slightly um, a very, uh, you know, non-biased title while uh, ChatGPT has a, has a nudge towards what it wants to say. Not wrong, not bad, but you know, it's, it's just a 
it's a strongly opinionated response which is something that i usually like with uh, ai because most of the times these ai don't have a strong opinion and that kind of uh, you know makes it makes you feel like you're talking to a robot not a, a real human being so this is this is quite interesting in this particular case that uh, we actually got something interesting so the next one is a classical test where i'm going to ask it to count some of the apples uh, apples picture i'm going to get the apples picture and i'm going to ask it to count how many apples we have got so i'm going to send this image um count the apples so send this image count the apples so send this image count the apples and send this image so technically if you see this image uh you can see that there is one two three four five six okay so let's see if it can answer so there are it says five apples are there uh which is definitely wrong so i, I can start a new chat maybe count the apples so one two three four five six there are six apples okay um grok has got it right chat gpt has got it wrong uh let me just say are you sure are you sure <laughs> it says my apologies there are five apples and uh, now let's see what chat gpt says this is again a big problem with the uh, large language models vision language models so it says uh, there are six apples now the five at the base one on the top um oh yeah so i'm not going to trust either of vision language model in this particular case for it to give me uh, something very interesting um, at least in this particular case the last one that we are going to do in this case is i'm going to just simply simply send one thing uh, which is one of the recent matches that i lost in chess and i want uh, i wanted to give me like the status of the match i've been losing a lot of matches uh, as you can see here so one of the matches is uh, this is the latest match i'm going to ask it to give me a trend and uh, i am going to say what is the status of the match what's the status of the match <laughs> and send this what's the status of the match in fact i've lost more than 250 points in the last one week i guess or three days it's quite terrible in this match black player little coder resigned white player neil was uh, declared the victor the move highlighted on the board uh, q x f 7 plus so this is the position a uh, place black kings in check leading to the resignation black's rating decreased by 7 points The game was a three point a three plus zero a blitz match. Quite a really good observation. So let's see. Status of match is that black has resigned, making black making the white victor. Score is in one zero favor and um, blitz match three white has twenty two seconds. I I still like uh, what uh, ChatGPT told me because it gives me the position details. Um, it gives me the player names and all the information. This um, takes us to the end of the test. I guess. It's good that Grok Two Vision is there. If you happen to be one of the users who use Grok actively, you might appreciate it. But I think it is nowhere close to ChatGPT or GPT Four Vision. Let me know what do you feel from this text, and if you have got any other test that I should be ideally doing. See you in another video. Happy prompting.